I think I'm gonna hire the same landscaper that I used last year because he was really easy to get along with. I used to be a landscape gardener, but I got my clothes too dirty, so I started doing it in portrait. What's the funniest landscape? Hill areas. Hello world. Today I will go over landscaping in City Skylines what the four options are in the vanilla game as well as the slight variations that come when you download the extra landscaping tools mod by bloody penguin and today let's just dive right into it because i know that you're not here for my hill areas jokes let's get landscaping i do want to let you know that you will see some modded items on the screen but for everything concerning landscaping this is the vanilla part of the game landscaping unlocks with the third milestone called tiny town landscaping right there so once you have hit tiny town in your regular playthrough of city skylines you will have access to the landscaping menu which is located down here on the bottom near the right-ish landscaping and disasters click on this guy and you are immediately brought to the relevant page for this tutorial before we touch on them let's look over here to the left at these kind of two different toggles that you will have available this leftmost one is the brush strength and just like you would think that it does it will toggle how strong of an effect your landscaping brush has so when you have only the left and shortest bar highlighted that's the least strong then the middle then the strongest Next, these three brushes are just the size, and you can see that size demonstrated by the red area of effect. So this is your smallest area of effect, your middle, medium area of effect, and the largest. Also up here, top left, you will see this landscaping soil availability. In the normal vanilla game, there is actually a mod in the mods menu. I'll put it on screen now that you can turn on or off, whichever you prefer. I have it toggled on right now so that we can demonstrate anything that we want to without having to fuss too awful much because I just want to show you the function of these four items. If you are playing with soil availability on, this brown bar will get less as you have less soil available to use. And that just means you have to take some soil from somewhere else maybe in order to use it where you want to use it. If you are playing with the extra landscaping tools mod installed, stick around until a little bit later in the video and I will go over the differences with the extra landscaping tools mod. It is relevant mostly to these things that I just pointed out, but for now, let's go through these options. Real quick, before we dive in, I just realized that the vanilla game does have a cost associated with landscaping. Do you see how they all say cost is 12.80? simoleon monies per cell as you're landscaping if you have money turned on and you're playing the vanilla game you'll need to watch your funds we have unlimited money today so here we go shift terrain it does what it says on the tin elevate and lower terrain elevate by clicking with the primary mouse button which nine times out of ten is your left mouse button lower by clicking with the secondary mouse button this is the simplest and probably most difficult to use in terms of making something actually look good tool so right now i am left clicking and it is making the terrain go up if i then want to make the terrain go down i right click so this is i'm holding down the right click on my mouse button so you've just seen what it looks like when i have used the highest strength and the biggest brush to give you the stark contrast let's go to the lowest strength the lowest brush I'm going to left click and I'm still holding left click just like I was before and that's what happens let's make editor toady work and let's do a side by side 
You can see the strong difference. I've held these down for the same amount of time. You saw them side by side. There's the differences that you're looking at. Sometimes you want to do a lot of soil at once. Sometimes you want to get a little bit more finesse. This is easy peasy, right? Congratulations, you know how to use the shift terrain tool. Let's get into the harder ones now. Level terrain. So you've made this monstrosity and you just want to flatten it and start over because you're trying to build a mountain but you don't want it to look like this. You need to go to the level terrain tool. It again does what it says. It makes the ground level or flat. My easy breezy breakdown of how to use this tool is to right click with the mouse when you are hovered over the level of land that you want everything to be at. So I want all of this bumpy garbage to get down to this flat level here. So I'm going to right click over here. I've right clicked. Nothing visual will happen on the screen in the vanilla game. We've right clicked here. You just have to have faith. Then left click and hold really anywhere but eventually you need to go over the area that you want to affect. So as I am left clicking and holding, all of this stuff comes down to the level that I right clicked at. Does that make sense? So we just used this tool to bring this land and this soil that is already up and pointing out or whatever to flatten it down to the ground. But you can use it the opposite way as well. The concept is the same. Hover over the level that you want the land to reach. Right click, so I'm right clicking now. That was my right click. And then go to the land that you want to change, left click, and it will rise up to meet that land. This height preference, I guess we'll call it, is now saved, right? It's saved in the mouse, <laughs> we'll say. So if I want this land to come down, all I need to do is left click again and this land comes down to meet it. And that's that. With this level terrain tool, you can also use the strength options. It does the same. It just takes slower to reach up to this level, but once it has reached this level, it won't go any further. That's it for the level terrain. I'm going to keep this here to show you the next tool in question, which is the soften terrain tool. I'm gonna to bring us back up to the strongest strength. I find if I'm playing vanilla, I typically am using the strongest strength. And what this does, I find the best way to describe this is just that it softens the terrain. So look how I would say sharp of an edge we've created with our level terrain tool. If I escape, you can maybe see it better. Like, look at that, that's, that's a cliff. If we then go into our landscaping tools and we use the softened terrain, when you read it, it tells you that the primary mouse button, so usually your left mouse button, it will do a gentle smoothing <laughs> and the secondary button, so your right mouse click has a stronger effect. Let's start with the left click. We're still on our strongest brush strength and the largest size. And I'm just gonna left click at this edge that I wanna just smooth this guy out. I'm just left clicking and it just kinda makes it less sharp. It brings the slope to a smoother slope. As you move your mouse along, if I go up and down this slope, it will continue to have an effect. And you can just see it kinda doing its thing, making things nice and smooth. You can really see it take effect at the very top and the very bottom because you can watch these, I'm calling them level lines. You can watch them get bigger and get smoother and do their thing. And then when you press escape, you can see how much smoother of a slope this is versus our sharper cliff. Now let's compare, that was our left click. We are still strongest strength, biggest size. Let's do a right click over here and it does the exact same thing. It's just a lot quicker, a lot stronger of an effect, but look, we, we reached the same end result. Between the right and left click, as well as the brush strength and the sizes, you can do some pretty cool finessing with this. And there's really just one other thing to show you with it. If we come over to this part of the map, this was done with the map, included with the map. You got these little bumpies, right? This tool, if you don't want bumpies in your mountains, I'm gonna left click here and it's a way to very easily get rid of these. If you just want a nice round hill or mountain, 
you just soften them. Done, softened. Bye bye, bumpies. All right, this last tool is probably the one that people struggle with the most. Let me just get a big old hill happening here. It's beautiful, isn't it? What this slope terrain tool does is it creates an even slope from where you tell it to start and tell it to stop. It has a similar setup to the level terrain tool where you need to set a desired height with your right click and then you will use your left click to get there. And you can go both ways with this. So I'll show you first. I want to make a slope that goes from this flat land up to the top of this hill, right? I just want it to be, you know, a nice angle downwards, even of land, right? So I'm going to hover over the top of it and I'm going to right click. So I've right clicked up here and now that tells the game that this is my desired height to get to eventually. Then I need to start somewhere out here on the flat land. I'm going to start over here and I'm going to left click and hold. And I'm just going to go towards the desired land and it's going to be jumpy because I'm moving around between the back of it and not, but you can do that. You can, you can go back and forth and see how it creates that pretty much even kind of ugly slope if we're being real. Now I can tidy this back up. I've still got this height stored in its memory. So I'm just going to click down here and I'm going to do the same thing. Just because I've, I've jumped around there, the mouse has jumped around just with the, the angle that I did it at. And there we go. Now, if I want a steeper slope, I can keep this same height stored and I can just start here and it will just figure it out. Done. You can do this the opposite way as well. So I can click down here with my right click. There, I've just right clicked and set this area down here as my desired end height and I can start up here. So I'm going to start up here. I'm going to left click and I'm going to slowly go towards the spot that I right clicked at and it creates that slope. And now because I've done this wacky angle to try to show it to you best, I've created some bumps back there, but we can tidy them up just by continuing to kind of hover over them and it all becomes this again kind of ugly giant slope but that is what it achieves there are a couple other cool things to know about this tool though if i set my desired height right here by right clicking then i come down here watch how i curve my mouse around the side and go up it will understand that I'm doing this curve to the side and it will calculate that into its slope. So this is where maybe making like a ski slope or something like that comes into play. You can curve things around like that. I'll do it again going the other way so that you can see it. I'm going to start down here and I'm going to curve my slope up and it just does the math and figures out how slope that's supposed to be. I think that's pretty cool. The last thing I should maybe clarify with this is that when you're doing your initial right click that sets the level that you want it to reach, I should clarify that you're not necessarily only setting the level. So I'm not only setting this height when I click right here, I'm also setting this spot, like this location. So I'm going to right click right here. I right clicked. Now, if I were to start here and try to go up to this side, it's not gonna it's not gonna reach that height right because i'm actually trying to get to this location and this height so i start back down here i go through all of this mountain and it levels it for me to bring a nice slope up to this spot i hope that makes sense please yell at me in the comments below if it doesn't i'm great at being yelled at i'm sure i can reword some things but i think you've got what you need to start using these tools if you're just playing the vanilla game, you are ready to go on your own adventure and put these together and try to make some really awesome mountainscapes or ski slopes or maybe some lakes and rivers. I'm not showing you how to do those today. I'm just showing you the functionality of the tools. Oh. Beautification and landscaping and mountain ranges are tough and maybe those will come in a future video. Make sure to subscribe if you want videos like that. For now, let's load up this exact same save with extra landscaping tools on and watch how different these look. 
All right, game is reloaded and we click on the landscaping and disasters tool. And this is what we see now. You'll notice that the soil availability up here and these other tinkering options down here are gone and they are replaced with this but we still have all of the same functionality. So your brush strength and your brush size, instead of being kind of three options each, you now have a scroll bar for each. Personally, I prefer this quite a bit. And let's show you them in action. Let's come back over here, shift terrain. We already know this one. Let's go the biggest brush size. <laughs> Look at that. It's ridiculous, right? I do also want to point out that down here you can change, do you see how when I change between these two, it gets kind of blurry at the edge and then this one is much less blur. Let's go to a reasonable brush size here and I'll show you the difference. I will show you these by going down and then going to the softer edge and going down. That's, you can see here, it's really just a softer edge and that's all there is to it. If you feel you have the need, you can bring your brush size up to 2000. You can do this. And that exists in your game now. But hey, let's say I want to undo what I just did. Do you see this button here? Undo terrain modification. Oh my goodness. I clicked a whole bunch of times, which is really frustrating. So I'm going to go control Z, control Z. And we're done. Use the brush size and the brush strength sliders as you need to and you'll start getting used to them. My one tip to you though is if I am using this shift terrain to start a mountain range or something, I honestly start with my brush strength very low, like 0 0.02 and that gives us closer to what the vanilla tool does. And then as I need to go higher with it, I, I rarely even bring it up to one because Look at you're not often going to go much higher than this, but the option exists to do so. Let's control Z back out of that again. Moving on to the level terrain tool, as well as the slope terrain tool. You'll notice when you click on these two over at the left, you see a new slider show up. The terrain height slider. What that does is it shows you visually on a slider where you have set your right click to be. So remember with this level terrain tool, I want to right click at this height and that will bring this up to that height, right? As I left click. Well, apparently when I right click here, that is apparently 119.67 height. You can manually adjust this as well and then just left click and it'll do its thing. That's useful or not useful. I'm not too sure that's going to be up to you, but you can visually see now where you have your height set to, or if you just want a visual representation that you have in fact right clicked, you can see the numbers change. The same thing happens with this slope terrain tool. So if I come up here and I right click that I want my slope to end up here, you can see the numbers change and then I left click up to it. Those are really all of your differences for the extra landscaping tools mod as far as the actual landscaping goes. The rest is the exact same as vanilla. I personally find trying to make mountain ranges and pretty ponds and that sort of thing a lot easier with the mod installed, but vanilla, it's, it's absolutely possible too. So that's it. That's the video showing you how to use the landscaping tools available in the game. If you thought it was helpful, of course, leave a thumbs up. If you want more City Skylines tutorials and content in general, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned guys. We've got some cool videos coming your way. Lots of ideas, big plans, big plans. Thank you all for being here. I will catch you next time.